So chapter two is the structure and function of joints. Of course, when we're talking about joints, we're talking about either where um, two bone ends come together or um, something that we'll talk about as a functional joint, where it's not necessarily two bone ends, but it's um, areas of the body that join together and have uh, a functional um, joint action. So, um, so the scapulothoracic joint is a good one to think of for that, where the scapula articulates with the um, posterior side of the rib cage. Um, it's not necessarily two bone ends coming together, but it has the function of a joint. So we're going to talk about bones first, and hopefully this will be a review from anatomy and physiology. So we're going to um, differentiate between the axial versus the appendicular skeleton. So um, in this diagram from the book, the um, axial skeleton is in red and the appendicular skeleton is in gray. So the axial skeleton is the skull, the hyoid, hyoid that is a hard one to say, hyoid bone, <laughs> ribs and vertebral column. And it forms the central semi-rigid bony axis of the body. So um, I always say that Anything that's really super important is encased in bone. So like your brain, your heart and lungs, um, your spinal column, and the axial skeleton takes care of those important things. Um, and it, it uh, provides us with our proximal stability. So you need proximal stability for distal mobility, and the axial skeleton is the um, beginning of that. The appendicular skeleton is the bones of the appendages or extremities. Um, it includes the scapula in the upper extremity, the scapula and the clavicle, and the pelvis in the lower extremity. So um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the different joints we're going to talk about in this class are in the appendicular skeleton, but we will also talk about um, joints in the axial skeleton. So um, there are really basically two different bone tissue types. Bone, sometimes we can think of it as being relatively um, inert or relatively uh, unchangeable, but it's actually very changeable and it's very metabolically active. Um, one of the major functions of our bones is it's a storage for minerals in our body. So a lot of our... Um, chemical processes, muscle contraction, and um, nerve uh, impulses, and that sort of thing, require calcium, a, a pretty good store of calcium to be, be available at all times. And so um, we have that storage in our bones. We have to have a way to get it in and out. So um, the um, bone is not just structural. It's also very functional. Um, but the two different types of bone are cortical or compact bone, and that's it's dense and extremely strong, and it typically lines the outermost bone portion and absorbs compressive forces. So that's really, you can think of that as being like the structural bone. And in this picture, they have the, um, you can see like the white areas on the outside are the compact bone. That's sort of like the casement, the, in, the part where it's encased. And then the porous lightweight bone on the interior is the cancellous bone. Um, it, the cancellous bone typically composes the inner bone portions, and it um, acts to redirect forces toward the weight-bearing surfaces. So you see when you look at the radiographs of the cancellous bone, it has quite a structure to it. It's not just random. So the, it has structure to redirect forces toward weight-bearing surfaces. So um, in the module, there's a little blurb on uh, Wolf's Law and... Basically, Wolf's Law is that um, bones change in response to the forces we put on them. So um, any place where there is a, um, a knob or a spine or um, a ridge on a bone, it's usually a muscular attachment or a ligamentous attachment. So um, we have to have something to attach to, and when you have muscles pulling on bone, that creates uh, more bone. It also happens in, in uh, pathological situations such as um, arthritis or plantar fasciitis where you have um, pathological forces pulling on bones and it causes bone spurs. It causes things that we don't want. 
um, bone growth that we don't want. And then um, the opposite, when you don't have enough pressure on bones, the bones thin because they're changing in response to the stresses we put on them. We're not putting any stresses on them and um, they're actually thinning. So um, bones are very active. So this is our basic long bone anatomy. Um, so our, our classic long bone here is the femur. Um, the diaphysis is the central shaft of bone. It's a thick hollow tube and it's composed mostly of cortical bone. Um, it has a cavity inside and we'll talk about what's in that cavity. Um, the epiphyses are the portions of bone arising from the diaphysis. They're like the ends of the bone and they're primarily composed of spongy bone. Um, they transmit weight bearing forces across the body. So um, it's, uh, it's good to know all those uh, different uh, areas of the bone and we'll talk about some more. The um, articular cartilage lines the articular surface of each epiphysis and it acts as a shock absorber between the joints. It also provides that smooth surface for those arthrokinematic movements that we need for um, good movement. Um, the periosteum is a thin, tough membrane that covers the long bones. Um, it secures the attachment of muscles and ligaments to the bone. So um, we talk about all our separate connective tissues like ligament, bone, um, fascia, tendon, that sort of thing. A lot of them really merge into each other. They're contiguous even though we talk about them separately. So that's how the um, tendons and the ligaments attach to the bone through the periosteum. So if we didn't have that thin, tough membrane as part of the connective tissue, um, it would be harder for the um, tendons and ligaments to attach to the bones. The medullary canal is a central hollow tube within the diaphysis of a long bone and it stores bone marrow for one thing. Um, it provides passage for arteries, which is really important for um, the metabolic properties of the bone. Um, the endosteum, uh, endosteum excuse me, is the membrane that lines the medullary canal surface. So contained within the endosteum are cells that are important for forming and repairing bones. So that's where our osteoclasts and osteoblasts are located. So the osteoclasts are breaking down bone to use the calcium and the phosphorus that's in there. Um, the um, osteoclasts are repairing bone, strengthening it up. Um, storing calcium that we don't currently need. So um, those that endosteum inside the medullary canal is really important for the metabolic activity of the bones. We have to have some place to put those cells, right? So this is our, here's our skeleton and all these different types of bones. So um, going from the bottom left, um, we're talking about short bones, long bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. So those are our five main types, and we'll go through each of them and, and give examples and talk about what they are. So you should know um, the function of each of the types of bones and an example or examples of each of the types of bones. So long bones, they're the ones like the femur and the humerus and the radius and ulna and tibia and fibula that contain an obvious axis or shaft. Um, the, ex, there, and there's a, an expanded bone portion at the end of each shaft, like the epiphysis. Um, so femur, humerus, radius, these guys are um, some of our major uh, movement segments. They, um, they, they're our bony levers, basically. And um, they also have that medullary canal um, allowing for a passage of arteries and um, they store those cells in the endosteum to um, complete the bone's metabolic responsibilities. So the short bones, um, or you can think of them as sort of being little cubes almost, where the length, width, and height are about equal. So like the carpal bones of the hand are a really good example of those, or the tarsal bones of the feet. They're um, tiny little short bones. And a lot of times these guys are structure and movement. That's their job. Structure and small movement. Flat bones are typically flat or slightly curved, like the scapula and the sternum. A lot of times a flat bone is the base for expansive muscular attachments. So the pelvis, tons of muscles attached to the pelvis and sacrum, tons of muscles attached to the scapula and the sternum. 
Um, flat bones metabolically also have red bone marrow and they produce red blood cells. So very important metabolically as well. Um, irregular bones are a huge variety of shapes and sizes. Um, like the vertebrae are irregular bones. Um, the sacrum, they're weird. They're just weirdly shaped and their shape is determined by their function. So form follows function in the body. That is ever so true. So, um, the uh, irregular bones, anything that doesn't fit into the other categories basically is, it's so irregular bone, that's the miscellaneous category. Um, sesamoid bones, they're uh, named after a sesame seed because they're like a little blurb similar to a sesame seed. Um, most of the time sesamoids are encased within muscle tendons. They protect the tendon and they increase um, muscle leverage to increase torque at the joints. So a really good example of that, and we'll talk more about it in the knee chapter, um, is the patella. So the patella is um, embedded in the um, quadriceps tendon, the patellar tendon. It increases the quadriceps leverage for knee extension. Knee extension is a hugely important functional activity of those muscles, and so the patella gives us more torque in knee extension. Um, we have various sesamoid bones throughout the body which are also encased in muscle tendons and provide us with that um, protection of the tendon and increased muscle leverage.